Okay, so here's what we know. CNN has obtained some of the messages that are now in the hands of the special counsel. In them, Trump's longtime political advisor, Roger Stone, unloads on the man that he once described as his back channel to WikiLeaks, Randy Credico. When Stone finds out Credico was subpoenaed, Stone sends him a text message saying, tell Mueller to go F himself. Is that a suggestion that he not testify? We'll ask him. This comes the day after the New York Times published emails between Stone, Steve Bannon, and a Breitbart editor in which they discussed information WikiLeaks had on the Clinton campaign. Is this proof that Stone was talking to the campaign about WikiLeaks might have when he said he never did? Bannon is also one of about a dozen of Stone's associates reportedly in touch with the special counsel's office. So let's put these questions to the man that they involve most, Roger Stone. Thank you for taking the opportunity. Chris, thank you for having me. Since I am uh, banned for life on Twitter, restricted today on Facebook, and they're trying to ban my show on InfoWars, I appreciate the opportunity to respond. Well, then let's get after it, as we say here. Uh, Randy Credico, let's start with him. There are a few things that everybody can agree on these days. Roger, one of them is never threaten a man's dog, but you do that in your messages with Credico. And the question is whether or not you were threatening him in a way that hopefully would make him not testify. I'm showing the audience now what you said. I'll rip you to shreds. I'm going to take that dog away from you. Mr. Credico is very attached to his dog, brought it with him to testify. Uh, and there's not a thing you can do about it because you're a weak, broke piece of blank. There's Credico's dog. What did the threat mean, Roger? Well, first of all, to take three text messages out of thousands um, really shows no context. These are the late night ravings between two grumpy old men who've been friends for almost 20 years. Uh, and Chris, they are friendly, they're vulgar, they're vicious, they're nasty, they're ribald, uh, but they're not serious. Uh, and uh, therefore, they'd have to be seen in context. So, for example, you don't see the text where he tells me that I should be willing to go to jail rather than reveal his identity as my source. You don't see the tax text where he says my apartment is likely wired by the FBI. You don't see the text where I urge him repeatedly to tell the truth. You don't see the text where he said he's so heavily medicated he can't remember chronologically well, anything look, that happened. Roger, please in offer up the text. So I'm happy to cherry, take them. You can, you can, I'm happy you to have can all of them. You can cherry pick these. Well, you can cherry pick these, but it creates a misimpression. I'm not there trying was no to do no effort that. to intimidate or coerce, or coerce Randy Credico to do anything other than the truth. I identified him for the House Intelligence Committee mm. as the man who gave me a solid tip. Right. That when Julian Assange appeared right here with Anderson Cooper in June of 2016 and said he had the mother load on Hillary that he was telling the truth and that it would be devastating. A bombshell, Credico right. said. Change the race. Let me, uh, let me ask you something. First of all, again, uh, let me make the offer. I'm happy to take all the texts that you have between the two if they tell a different story than the ones that I've been privy to. I have no interest in not having full transparency on it. If you want to offer them up, please do. The reason that I make the suggestion I do about the text is because of Credico's response. And if we have that, we can put it up. He was offended by what you said. Uh, he said uh, back well, to let's you get into, let's after get the into threat the, with let's the dog, get into he the said, dog. you crossed a line when you did that. You have no right let's to threaten get in, my dog. Let's get in, Didn't let's seem get, like a joke to him. Let's get to the dog. Uh, I had seen Randy's dog. He was unemployed. I thought the dog was underfed. My, uh, I've written about animal welfare and uh, rights extensively. I am a dog lover. This was not a serious threat to take his dog, and he knows it. Yes, he made me very angry by his refusal to tell the truth and to keep a shifting narrative. He didn't do anything illegal. He didn't ever told me the source or the content of the WikiLeaks uh, disclosures. He only told me they were devastating and that they would come in October. I now believe he learned that from a woman friend of his who was a lawyer for WikiLeaks for over 30 years. Right. Uh, I was reluctant to, re to uh, give his name to the committee because I thought there would be professional uh, reprisal against him. Uh, he was a Bernie Sanders supporter. He was not and is not a Trump supporter. I hear you about we that. We had a common opposition to Hillary Clinton. Uh, I'm just trying to get the timing straight here because you've said this many times. Credico was my go-between. I got information from him. But he didn't interview Julian Assange until August 25th. 
So that would have been irrelevant, irrelevant, ir irrelevant. He knew WikiLeaks lawyer for 30 years. But he talked to you I've two days before that. that. That was his source. I hear you. And I heard you say that. Um, thank you for repeating it. Two days earlier, when he was talking to you, he asked you what you knew. What is the October surprise? You've been in touch and indirectly with Julian Assange. Can you give us insight? That doesn't sound like a guy who knows more than you. Sounds like a guy who thinks you know more than him. Again, out of context, uh, Assange himself has said Stone is a clever spinmeister, but we've never had any contacts with him. Uh, there is no evidence or person who can honestly testify that I had any direct communications with WikiLeaks or Julian Assange, other than those were, that were disclosed in a benign direct message to the House Intelligence Committee, leaked to the Atlantic Magazine, who then edited them before they reported them. Understood. But why would Randy Credico suggest, I understand your answer as to Julian Assange, but as to Randy Credico, he's the one suggesting that you know more than he did about an October surprise two days before he interviewed Julian Assange. Again, the emails, when seen in their totality, are completely inconsistent. In other places, he admits a to being uh, the source. And he says that, uh, that you know, he's prepared to go to jail over his rights as right. a journalist. This is his radio not show, to not his sources. Not to interrupt you. I'm sorry, Roger. But this, this is from his radio show. Uh, it's not about taking it right, out of context. And, the radio, and on the radio show, I say I have no influence or contact with Assange. Uh, and I don't want to give the impression that I do. Uh, and I talk about a source that I disclosed uh, to the Washington Post and then later to the Daily Caller. I had a tip from a Fox News reporter. I produced the email uh, who suggested that the WikiLeaks disclosures would be about the Clinton Foundation. And I said that in a speech uh, to a Republican group. Turns out to be incorrect. But that was my source, not some contact mm. with WikiLeaks. Is it fair... Is it fair to look at the message about Mueller, in which you say Mueller should go F himself? Uh, that could be construed as a suggestion that Credico not cooperate. Uh, on the contrary, if you've seen in totality, uh, he tells me that, that I should go to jail in order to shield his name from the federal prosecutor. Uh, these are cannot be taken seriously. We were friends for 20 years. They're all over the map. They have to be seen in totality. Have you given all of your text messages that. to anybody? I mean, if, if you really believe you're being hurt by context, Roger, why don't you offer up all the proof you have that shows that context gives you the benefit of doubt? Have you offered them up? I, 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 assure, I, I assure you the federal investigators have all of my text messages all of my emails and all of my phone calls. The real question is, how do they justify having them in 2016, as the New York Times has reported on January 20th, 2017, uh, that they were looking at them? Right. What was the probable cause for looking at Have them? Have you then? asked them? This was many months, many months before the appointment of Mr. Mueller. Have you asked the investigators? Uh, we, we have not. Okay. We have not. Uh, another issue that I want to give you a chance to uh, deal with is uh, the messages between you and Steve Bannon. You had said, I didn't speak yes. to anybody in the campaign about Assange. Uh, we now have back and forth between you and Bannon about Assange. And we have a discussion with you and one of Bannon's minions about what Assange may have. And in that missive, you say, I'd tell Steve what's happening, but he won't call me back, which shows not only that you had been talking to him, but that certainly you were making efforts to talk to him. Which is it? You never spoke to him about it or this uh, uh, is the truth in no, front of our lion no. eyes? Uh, again, the context. On October 2nd, it was widely believed that Julian Assange, who set up a presser, mm -hmm. it was actually three o'clock in the morning, so I think it would have been October 3rd here, in which he would have a disclosure. Everybody, every political reporter, every politico in the town was watching this. Yes. It was widely heralded. When he did not, Bannon sent me an email and said, what was that last night? What happened? Why you? I told him two things. Uh, why? Because I had been tweeting very aggressively about this. Perhaps he was following my Twitter feed. Uh, but the two things I said was that Assange had security concerns. After all, remember, Hillary Clinton had proposed hitting him with a, with a drone to silence him. There were threats against his life. That information came from Mr. Credico. I wrote it on March 9th, 2018, uh, in a long piece at Stone Cold Truth. The other thing I told Bannon was there would be 
loads going forward every week. That Assange right. had announced that at his presser. Politico had reported it hours before, but many in the media had missed it. The story right. was Assange drops nothing rather than his very specific plan to uh, make releases every week through the election. He actually said all of the election related material will be released in the next several weeks on a weekly basis before the election. But Public the part I don't understand is, so, and I appreciate your explanation of the context. Thank you for that. Uh, but you've said in the past you never spoke to him about it. The emails uh, prove you, you did. You know, I, 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 miss, uh, I missed this one email. I have one million emails. The email is benign based on the two pieces of information in it. Let's be clear. Nowhere do I say that I have direct communication with Assange. Assange and WikiLeaks have repeatedly, correctly, accurately denied that. There is no evidence to the contrary. So uh, I think that provides the correct context. You, you said Mr. to Bannon Boyle. Bannon has some animus for me. Yes. Because I did write a piece right. urging that he be discharged from the Trump White House. And two days later, he was. So right. this was a leak via his minion, Sam Nunberg. Hmm. Uh, and uh, there's a follow-up email from a Breitbart reporter which reveals nothing other than the fact that I suggest that if Bannon wants to know why, uh, why he, Assange has released nothing and what his plan is, both of which are public information right. at that point, he can merely respond but to But the them. substance of the offerings, or the loads as they were called at that time, um, were not. And when Boyle, the Bannon minion, contacts oh. you, Assange, what's he got? Hope it's good. Your response, it is. Based solely on the uh, assurances of Mr. Credico, who said it was a bombshell, dynamite, incredible, would change the race, would make history. Uh, and uh, actually it was, uh, that email is on the third. Assange has his announcement on the second of 10 uh, of, of weekly disclosures every week. Mm -hmm. It was public information when I said that. Two last I things never for was you. never very specific. Uh, two last things for you, Roger. The first one is, um, Two things that you have forgotten in the context of these questions to you. One is that you did speak to Bannon about this, however you want to explain the substance of the conversation. The second is uh, what seems to have been something that would have been hard to forget, which is this really colorful figure who came to you and it involved um, the campaign as well with supposed information. Uh, a guy who was all dressed up like a Trumpophile, came with another guy. Uh, you had to sit down and meet with him. You forgot about that too. Are these convenient? lapses of memory? No, actually, the real question on the gentleman you refer to, Mr. Greenberg, is why an FBI informant, who is a foreign national, actually a Russian, who's in the country on an informant's visa, is visiting me in May of 2016, trying to entrap Donald Trump. Remember what he says. I have this negative information on Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. I said, that's very interesting. He says, it'll cost you $2 million. I said, I don't have $2 million. He says, no, no, it's not your $2 million I want. It's Donald Trump's $2 million. Mm -hmm. This precedes the announcement that the, that the investigation uh, into whether there's Russian influence in the Trump campaign began in June. Using a human asset in May for intelligence purposes would be highly illegal. I'm hoping that Mr. Nunes and the Intelligence Committee can get to the bottom of why a federal informant, an FBI right. informant, who's got a, a violent history as a criminal who can only be in the country under the uh, aegis of the Miami FBI is coming to see me at all. Why'd you forget about it? Uh, because I'm 66 years old and it was a presidential campaign and, I, and it was an extremely important year. It was also prior to Hillary raising the question of Russophobia to distract from her own connections to the oligarchs uh, around P Putin. Um, uh, since nothing illegal happened at the meeting and nothing happened illegal as a result of the meeting, I have no particular reason to dissemble. I simply forgot it. But the more important question is, why is an FBI informant right. coming to see me well, to begin with? Look, I mean, as we both know, and you probably know better than I, the idea that an FBI informant uh, is only on that one situation and is clean otherwise, um, you know, they can often be very compromised and shady guys that are working with the government on one level, uh, but not on others. But I think all questions should be pursued. And in that conversation uh, with that man, you eventually remembered saying $2 million from Donald Trump, he never pays for anything. And that is probably the most certifiably true thing I know you to have said 
in any of this. Roger Stone, thank you for taking uh, and, on these and, questions. And I reject his off. And I reject his offer. Thank you, Chris. Understood and appreciate you taking this opportunity. As we learn more, the invitation is always a continuing one. Thank you. All right. So now as we head into the election, 